So we were talking about the easy bruising syndrome, which we say mostly affect healthy women. And we were able to establish the fact that these women are easily prone to bruises as a result of trauma, in which is not supposed to cause such a magnitude of bruise. But why do these women have, uh, or, why, or why are these women much more prone to this particular syndrome? Or what is the reason behind the occurrence of this particular word, easy bruising syndrome? So the main reason is due to the, word, the increased fragility of the cutaneous word, blood vessels. The blood vessels, which is found in the skin of this woman, is very, very fragile. That is why these women are much more prone to bruises, or you can call it achemosis. Guys. All right, the next uh, vascular disorders that I want us to talk about is what? The snail pulpura. So the snail pulpura occurs, it's a vascular disorder that occurs due to the what to the atrophy of what the supporting tissues of the vessels. Whenever the atrophy of the supporting tissue of the vessels takes place, of course you expect the vessels to be to be prone to what uh, to be to be to be altered or to be is the vessels will be uh, prone to alteration easily, guys. So without further wasting of the time. The last vascular disorders that I want us to talk about or to see today is called what? the Enox scrolling pulpura. So this Enox scrolling pulpura is actually a type 3 hypersensitivity disorder affecting the blood vessels. So actually, this particular disease is mostly common in children. And this particular disease is mostly preceded by what acute respiratory tract infection. That's infection of the uh, respiratory tract. Uh, usually, what uh, after the infection of the uh, respiratory tract, this particular uh, hypersensitivity reaction presents itself in the form of enoch uh, scol uh, scolding what pulpurus. But in this particular disorders. We have what uh, the occurrence of arthritis, as well as what hematuria, as well as nephritis can also what occur. But the recovery of patients from this particular dis uh, uh, disorder is what spontaneous. This disorder resolves itself with time. So the next hemostatic uh, uh, disorders that I wanted to talk about today is. The platelet disorder. So, if you ask yourself, what are the platelets? If you can remember from the first episode of this particular lecture, we were able to establish that the platelet comes from the bone marrow. They are made from what some cells found in the bone marrow called megacarosome. And this platelet plays a very important role in the formation of what the primary hemio static plug which is very important to the hemostatic process okay what are platelet disorders if you ask yourself so by definition you can define the platelet disorders as a pathological condition affecting the platelet either quantitatively or qualitatively or functionally when these disorders affect the platelet quantitatively, what do we call it? We call it thrombocytopenia. And when these disorders affect the platelet functionally, leading to abnormal functioning of the platelet, we call it thrombocytopathy. So in this segment, we will discuss both the thrombocytopenic disorders as well as the thrombocytopathic word disorders, guys. So right now, let's discuss the thrombocytopenic disorders. The thrombocytopenic disorders, they are disorders which occur due to the reduction in the number of what the platelet in the plasma. 
if you can recall vividly, we were able to establish that the normal serum concentration of the plas of, uh, of platelet in the plasma is what is 150 to 400 to the power uh, multiplied by 10 to the power of 9 per liter. When we have a reduction in the number of the platelet in the plasma, we call that thrombocytopenia. But even when we have a reduction in the number of the platelet in the plasma to a value of 50, you get to understand that there is no clinical manifestation of bleeding. And there is no any form of petechial, no form of ecchymosis, neither do we have a form of a, a, any form of bleeding from the patient. But when the plasma account, the pla when the, pl the platelet count, sorry, when the platelet count is less than 20 by 10 to the power of 9 per liter, we get to understand that what we experience what bleeding, mostly superficial what bleeding, like petechial bleeding, uh, ecchymosis, and the rest of them. So what are the possible causes of thrombocytopenic disorders? Okay, by common sense, since the platelets are formed from the bone marrow, what if we have a reduction in the production of platelet from the factory, which is the bone marrow? Of course, that can lead to the reduction in the, in the platelet count in the plasma. And what can possibly cause the reduction in the formation of platelet from the bone marrow? The first thing you can uh, you should have in mind is leukemia. Leukemia can cause thrombocytopenia condition in a patient, as well as what uh, anemia, to be specific, a plastic what anemia can bring about a thrombocytopenia condition in a patient. The third thing is infection by virus, such as what the HIV virus can cause what. Uh, thrombocytopenic condition in a patient. Of course, we have some drugs that can lead to the what uh, uh, a thrombocytopenic condition in a patient. And also, we have toxic chemicals, guys. Toxic chemicals can also lead to the destruction or reduction in the proliferation of platelets in the bone marrow. And not, not forgetting the one thing that most people like taking. That is ethanol, guys. Alcohol. Heavy consumption of alcohol can lead to the development of thrombocytopenic condition in a patient due to decreased production of what platelet from the bone marrow. So all these things that we've listed below, they can lead to the depression in the proliferation of platelet from the bone marrow. So, the next uh, causative agent or etiological factor that can lead to a, a thrombocytopenic condition in a patient is when we have excessive peripheral destruction of the platelet. Um, in this particular excessive peripheral destruction of the platelet uh, uh, is usually what mediated by what the auto uh, by the by the immune system. And when did the immune system disrupt the platelet? What do we call that? We call it the autoimmune idiopathic thrombocytopenic polyps. So, uh, normally, what happens? Why does the immune system destroy the platelet? Before the immune system destroys the platelet, the platelet must be what sensitized, guys. So before we continue into a uh, deeper understanding of this concept, 